There she is. Hello. Hi, Julie. Hello. How are so you? Nice to meet you too. Thanks so much for having us. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? Perfect. 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 Hi. So I'm so thrilled that you're here. Uh, we have never met. I know. You're in Charleston in New York, and I'm in Charleston sometimes in New York too. So it's finally, it's nice to finally say hello. Thank you to you and weren't you just in new york bopping around having fun i was uh, on a rare girls trip weekend yeah. um we had a blast and i'm actually headed up in a couple days for a client trip so perfect well it looked like a great a great weekend so I'm sorry to miss you <laughs> yeah i know i know so i want to get started um i wanted to do this to highlight wedding planners and i'm going to be doing other vendors as well that i admire that i and fans of their work that I am inspired by. So you were one of the top, you know, people that came to mind. And so I'm so excited. Really nice. You. Thank you. I'm hugely flattered and excited to be in your collection. This is amazing. Fun. So I want to get started because my goal for these, you're the first, um, I've done Instagram lives before, but you're the first in this series. Um, so my goal is for them to be pretty quick so that it doesn't take up your time you know, the viewer's time, the listener's time. So I'm going to get started on the questions if that's yeah. all right. Let's hop in. Okay, cool. So welcome. Um, so first of all, where are you based? So I'm primarily in New York. That's where our kind of core office is, where we live. Um, but we do have an, an office in Charleston. Okay, so, but where is it I'm in based Charleston? in New York. Um, we're right on Broad Street. So our client services manager, Morgan, she's based in Charleston and she lives there. Um, and we still have a home in Charleston. So don't want to fully, you know, abandon such a fabulous place, but we are loving living in New York and the business is really kind of rocking and rolling being based out of here. So amazing. And how many women do you have on your team? So we're a team of four, um, which is exciting. We, we grew this year. Um, we have a client services manager, Morgan, who I mentioned, who's not in our New York office, but in Charleston. And then our director of events, Colette, who's fabulous, who's been with me for going on three years. Um, and then we have kind of just expanded to add Claire to the team as an event assistant and office manager, and she's fabulous. So. Amazing. Yeah. So I know it takes a team oh. to, to create the magic oh, yeah. guys. Create, and, a, so. and an even bigger team when we roll into actual event event time, but um, that's our kind of core crew in the office sure. every day. Sure. So I want to know, I always love, I do an Inspired with Julie uh, mentorship and mentor day, and I always love to know what inspires you, but I want to know first, like, how you got yeah. into weddings. Uh, um, gosh, I, I joke that I was a serial intern, like starting in high school. I don't know what it was internally in me, but I just wanted to get real life work experience. And so I dabbled in PR, I dabbled in marketing, development. Um, I got this lucky break to work in fashion one summer for Lila Rose when I was really young before college. And then in college at the University of Virginia, I studied art history and architectural history, but I got involved with this burgeoning program called arts administration, and it was the business of the art. So kind of merged this concept of like the business of the creative world and that struck a chord with me. So I got an opportunity to work at the Cooper Hewitt um, National Design Museum in college doing development and special events. And I think that's where I officially caught the bug. It's like, what is this wild fun world of special events? Um, and being New York, being around like amazing creatives. Um, so then I went back to school for my last year and was like, I've got to learn more about this. Maybe I want to be an event planner. And I kind of pushed to get in the door at this fabulous place called Easton Events that was in Charlottesville. Um, and I started working for Lynn um, in college as an intern. And then I stayed on and had an amazing 10 year career at Easton Events. And then I just have never looked back. I just absolutely love it so i i guess the, sh the long story to get there to the short story is there's something about this kind of multifaceted industry where we wear many hats in every given day from leadership to design to 
kind of counseling and, and client management and client services to hospitality and creating amazing experiences. I just think the variability, um, but also the complexity of it just keeps me motivated every day. I love that. That's such a good way to put it. I always have trouble explaining, um, you know, I feel like I'm not just a photographer on a wedding day. Oh, I'm yeah. always helping with the similar things that you guys do, not at the same level as you, but um, I, I love photography for the same reason. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. And I too actually went to school for um, historic preservation. Um, oh, wow. So history and architecture. Yeah. So. Uh Oh, that's so cool. I'd love to pick your brain about that another yeah. time, but fun. Yes. Yeah, different hat, but it still has to do with <laughs> But you have the eye for the lines and the detail and yes. it all it all adds up. Absolutely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So going on that route, kind of where do you find your inspiration? Is it from yeah. history? Is it art? What is it for you? Yeah, I mean, gosh, all of it. Um, I think studying interiors less so than other parties like we really steer clear of kind of that unless it's like archival references that are amazing um but we i love studying interiors great designers you know from other eras and contemporary um i love traveling i mean i, I know that's sort of a known entity if you travel you get inspired but i think in travel you learn cultural references, you see new things, you um, have this sort of open, this kind of fresh lens on on creativity. And um, I think culinary experiences are particularly fruitful when you travel or kind of going into new hotels, just service and how things are done um, kind of across genres really inspires me. But yeah, I would say, you know, the arts as well and architectural history um, and just like references to different periods and how that kind of how history continues to repeat itself mm -hmm. and you find that in design um, and in trends and how you want to keep your work relevant but sort of avoid trends by kind of banking all of your inspiration on on some more fact I think I think is really interesting so. sure and I can see that in your work honestly I can you have such a unique style and I think it, all of that comes through. Well, thank you. So yeah. I appreciate that. So you, you've only, but you, you emailed me and I didn't even realize that you've only been doing this personally for seven years with your own business, correct? Well, no, I mean, my, my background is I started right after school. So I was with Lynn for 11 years, mm -hmm. uh, 10, just around 10. Um, and then I launched Augusta Cole in 2020 so i'm going into four wow. years of augusta wow. pole events yeah i mean and look what you've done wow. in four years wow <laughs> well and i have a lot to thank to the relationships and experiences that um you know i had during the first decade of my career and then i feel so fortunate to just have this energy and enthusiasm and excitement to kind of continue to build on it sure. in our own capacity but thank you for that sure but you you know it takes you have to be the one that moves forward so yeah for sure you're very humble <laughs> so with that said you've only been doing this for you at augusta cole for four years but i know lynn easton who else inspires you in in the wedding world yeah i mean she was a, a great mentor of my life for sure um i have such a i've collected so many wonderful mentors it's honestly hard to name yeah i do think you know, garnering respect, you know, being someone who's been in the field for now 15, but I, I know that I'm, I am, you know, relatively younger in the field and I have so much respect for the men and women who have sort of pioneered where events and weddings are today and who can, you know, and that they have sort of been so resilient and what they've sustained and how they've defined this career, such an amazing career path. Um, and I'm so lucky to call many of them, you know, great mentors, great friends. And I think the great thing about this community is it is really supportive. And as long as you put in the time and the effort to, to kind of give back and make sure you're available and, you know, we're all traveling to similar places and it's so great to see, you know, through Instagram, like, oh, they're just in Venice. Like, I'm going to call them and see if they're having the same experience or if they have any insight on X and, um, that just general kind of connectivity and, and network of support has been huge, um, huge in launching my own business, but also just huge and being able to scale your work and do more extraordinary things.
Absolutely. I mean, it's something that I um, push into my mentees that I mentor that connecting is the most important thing in business. Um, For sure. And, and keeping those connections and nurturing those connections uh, and finding those authentic connections yeah. um, that you will want to continue and nourish. Absolutely. Um, and nurture. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that. great and so much respect so <laughs> absolutely respect <laughs> so this is a question that I I always talk about with my mentees something that's challenged me my challenge is how I overcome them we all none of us are perfect yeah uh, we all make mistakes um, I believe mistakes are learning opportunities and so what's something that you that challenged you last year or maybe a mistake you you and your team made that you learned from that has made you grow as a, as a company and better serve your, your clients? Yeah, it's a great question and a, a really good one to talk about. Um, I have more of a global comment I, I kind of was reflecting on last year. And, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And that can be like, ooh, what does that mean? Um, and it can apply to a lot of times in your life. But for us, so we we really care about the creative, we, we love, we care about a seamless event from start to finish. Let me be clear there. But sure. um, we do emphasize design, although we're not full scale producers and we collaborate with different creative partners. That's our business model. We are the engine behind the creativity for our clients and really handle that creative relationship with our design partners. Um, you know, wonderfully collaborative way. But as a result of that, we're always sort of pushing the envelope for custom ideas, sourcing, new thoughts. And I often am willing and excited to take that on as our team, being the producers of those really specialty pieces. And when I travel, I you know, like to make plates. I like to make glassware. I like to make linens. These are all the things that kind of add this extra finesse to our, to our events for our clients. But I have learned and continue to learn that that is extremely time consuming in a wonderful way, like the outcome is worth it. But you don't want something so specific and so specialized to outweigh some of the bigger picture needs and focus. So we as a team have been really working on, is that something we could, you know, continue continue to do, not diminish the quality of our work, but have someone else support us in executing it to take it off of our plate and it still be in a good, you know, a palatable way to handle it for our client. Or, you know, should we internally scale so we have more support for these specialty projects? And, and re the result for our team this year was to grow, which is awesome and that a fortunate place to be that we can. Um, but I think just assessing you know saying yes that you just because you can do it and you know you you would be able to you've got to weigh that yes against the big picture and that's something so we hard. were on mm -hmm. that's great I, I appreciate you sharing that it is so hard right to um weigh passion projects and how that works in your business versus what the reality of the situation yeah. is and maybe somebody else could do that more efficiently better right um but yeah. I know you probably love the, the deep, deep oh, details, I right? Um, I do. I, yeah. I do. That's yeah. the problem. Right. And, but, and you can tell. I mean, yeah. you can tell in your work, but um, I know. I, I find myself with the same issue, not to your scale, but um, just deciding who can. No, it's a it, thing. Can someone else is every better? business. Yeah. Like, and, and think about how you, the other phrase, just how you best distribute weight. Like, I've been using that phrase internally a lot. Just. And, and considering like how tapped are, are is your team and who who has room and then what what how do they need to be supported to run with that and I just I think it's something we continue to work on and um, as your plate fills up you sometimes get less strategic on how how to handle those things so just continuing to kind of lay that groundwork when you aren't even as busy so that when you are so busy it's all the map is laid out I think is important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that kind of leans into to my next question is everybody wants to know how to get into the luxury, the ultra luxury market. I don't even like the I terms, know. but we use them because everybody, know, you know, every kind of is a, uh, it's a way to categorize everything, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't love labels, but it does make it easier for everybody to communicate on the same sure. page, I guess. So what advice, um, you have a ton of experience uh, in the industry. What advice do you have for 
let's say, let's put them together, wedding planners and then maybe photographers, videographers that want to get into the luxury market that aren't quite there. Yeah. So in the same way that we approach planning, like I say, lay a really healthy foundation first. Like you've got to make sure your internal systems are locked and loaded. Because if you go from here to there fast, like you want the right team in place financially, from an insurance perspective, from just your internal processing and management, how you delegate tasks, I would just tighten up, tighten up home base. Um, make sure you focus on your client servicing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about referral and it, especially at the luxury set. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the clients that may not never let you share your images. So it's not mm -hmm. about your social media splash. It's about mm -hmm. how you made that client feel from mm -hmm. minute one to the, the, to the aftermath, to the afterglow. Um, so I think really focusing on your client servicing and then Kind of once you have those things down pat and you feel like you you're you've caught your stride and where do i go from here now you can take some risks and you can really put yourself out there and i think you need the biggest thing is like why you like why what's gonna what makes you different because there's a lot of talent out there like i go through my instagram feed and i'm blown away yes like, there's a new name or somebody doing something innovative or i'm like whoa that's impressive like there's a lot of beauty out there and it's got to be more than the picture and then it's got to be something that just allows you to articulate it as part of your brand. So what are, what is your messaging going to be? And it, it shouldn't be emulating someone else that you admire. It shouldn't be, um, you know, if I just do it like this person, then I'm going to quickly become in the clump of people like them. Like it's got to be, what is your, your it thing mm -hmm. and I would just spend time sort of honing your craft targeting that message and sometimes it's ephemeral it's not an image it's you know how to throw a killer party and like mm -hmm. how do you then maybe you need to invest in a little more video at your events to like relay that message maybe you know how to execute like the most exquisite culinary experience well then how are we going to share that with the world where a still photo isn't going to do it so I think there's no, you, if you're tracking, like, I just want to manifest luxury, it's not going to happen. But if you kind of in the same way, like working with a trainer, you know, if you get all of your, your, your base, you know, and you tighten up your house and you make sure your team is well run. And then you focus on what is your, your differentiating factor and really harness that. A hundred percent. And I could not agree more. Um, and the same goes for photography and photographers totally. too. Oh, I, I think I, it's very applicable. And I guess to answer the photography, videography, Julie, if I was to say one other thing, it's really unique that in the event industry, one of the few, and I think I'm right in saying this, one of the few contracts you sign that is defined by hours is still photography, most of the time, photography and videography. And I think you have to set boundaries. I respect that. But if you approach game day with just like, I'm here for you from the planner to the client, that's going to serve you in spay, like come back to you time and time again, that you are there for everybody. Um, and I, again, like, I don't think you should overwork yourself to the point you're taking advantage of, but just that sense of like, I know my contract says x but at the end of the day i just want to get it and i want to get it perfectly and i want don't want to leave a single detail unturned then i think that's a great tip just for what the high-end planner and client is looking for 100 percent could not agree more um i think it's best when especially photographers it's such an individual sport yeah. but it's such a team team sport on a wedding day yeah um, and i think that's great advice um to go in as a team I think guest experience and couple experience and also vendor experience is so important. Um, as a photographer, videographer, wedding planner, it's important to make everyone feel great yeah. and, and um, could not agree more. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. So uh, last, last bit of like serious talk. Okay. What's, what's the best piece of advice you've, you've ever received? This is such a hard question, I'm sure. But uh, what's the best piece of advice that so, you would find? Yeah, I have two. So my first is like just something that we should all remember and tell ourselves every day. Never assume. 
like in planning, like we can never assume we understand our client. We can't assume we read a contract right. We can't assume that somebody has it taken care of for us. Like in any business that you run, just going that extra mile for affirmation, for confirmation um, will always serve you. So I think just never assuming is a good tip in life. Um, and then the other is a little more of a story, but um, I was traveling early on and launching Augusta Cole and I was with kind of a mentor in the field and, and his team. And I was talking to one of his employees and she said something so poignant that's will never leave me. And she said, you know, as hard as we work, we always know that our boss, our, our leader is, is working harder. And yes. I thought that was so like right there in that moment when I was like, okay, growing into being, you know, having a team one day and, and kind of creating our company ethos. I just think it's so important to remember as the leader for your clients, for your team, that the buck stops with you. And if you're putting in the effort and attention to detail and the focus and the care, it's going to trickle down and impact your team. And it also motivates them if you're always motivated yourself. So I thought, hope that's helpful. And do you, does, does that come naturally for you as a leader? Uh, I think, you know, I think it does. I did, I played sports growing up and I think that it's like, you know, those captains kind of thing, like <laughs> a lot of leadership roles. And um, I do love team morale. I love building people up, um, kind of encouraging people to be their best, giving people a long leash so that they can show how much they can do. I, I believe in that method. I, I was coached with that same method in professionally as well. And um, yeah, I think great leadership can stem to great businesses. I could not agree more. I too was sports. What sports did you play? Um, I played lacrosse and okay. um, I did soccer and basketball. Like it was much younger, but lacrosse was sort of my game. Um, so fun. The, I didn't play in college or anything. Did you have siblings? I didn't. I was an only child, but I always okay. collected friends as siblings. Yeah. I like refused to believe I was an only child. I, so. I love it. I love it. I had brothers, so I had to play sports. Oh, there um, you go. You were thrown <laughs> into it. No excuses. So, yeah, I can relate um, a lot. So what? What's something you're looking forward to this year? What's something fun personally or business yeah. that you're looking forward to? We've got some great travel lined up. So a big fun wedding weekend in St. Bart's at the start of the season, which has been on my bucket list to do and with a fabulous client. Um, and then we're spending a fair amount of time in Italy, both personally and professionally. And Italy is always a good idea. Yeah. Um, and then San Miguel is a place that's near and dear to my heart. And my husband and I love it. And we put a lot of time and energy there professionally, but really personally. And a dear family friend who has turned client, um, they're having a wedding in San Miguel. And that's really, really exciting for us. Amazing. That is on my bucket list. Oh, you got to go. I know. I mean, as a photographer, the light, the colors, the, the culture, oh, it's so good. The color and the architecture just look magical. Yeah. I mean, you, so. it, yeah, it, you've got to go. It's on my list. <laughs> yeah. Out. <laughs> Charleston and New York. New York. Okay. Real Housewives of New York City. Mm, okay. Not for me. <laughs> more is more or less is more? More is more when done right. I with knew tips. you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree too. Uh, after party or early bed? After yes. party. <laughs> me too. Okay. Fly or drive? Fly. Definitely fly. <laughs> and the last one is spa day or beach day. Spa day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I appreciate you. So I want to give you, if there's anything you want to talk about, um, I'll give you a, pl a platform for that. If there's not, we can say our goodbyes. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, just... I, I'm good. I think this is great. So fun. I appreciate the opportunity, Julie. I think it's great. I love this live platform. Um, just like the rawness of it is great. And I appreciate you pulling this together. So thank you for including Augusta Cole on the Thank on the you so show. much. Yes, <laughs> I want to connect. This this year I'm doing more 
connecting personally and business. Yeah. And so um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. To I know you're super busy. Um, so I really appreciate it. So where can people, if they want to follow you or yeah. hire you, where can they find you? Perfect. So Instagram is pretty easy. It's at Augusta Cole. Um, and if you want to find us or reach out to us, contact at Augusta Cole. Um, AugustaCole.com. You can tap right in to send us a note. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. And yes, please follow along. Got some fun travel coming up. So good stuff. Yay. I can't wait to follow along. And uh, maybe I'll see you in New York one of these days soon. I'd love it. Let's do it. Okay. Amazing. Thanks, Julie. Soon. Thanks, Bye. Augusta. See you guys later. Thank Bye, you guys everyone. For Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.